Hi there guys, welcome back to the next video in my Cantor Solar Run series, where I aim to solve the game with a Pokemon chosen by our randomizer wheel. Let's recap the rules and get straight back into it. First off, the wheel decides, which is three Pokemon, which is one of the three, and we do the run with that Pokemon. Secondly, I can only use that Pokemon in battle, but I can catch utility Pokemon for HMs. Third, I can't heal in battle using items, but healing outside of battle is allowed, and moves like recover and rest also allowed. Fourth, I can use the badge boost glitch, because it's kind of unavoidable in Gen 1. Finally, I can use TMs and HMs. Now let's recap, let's get on with the video. Alright, now that we're back, let's uh, take the first spin of the wheel. And um, we've got Gloom this time. Fucking hell, Gloom's come up so much. Um, sure, it will be hard like the Bulbasaur run, but uh, Grimer, we've already done Muck recently. Let's see what our third choice is. And the third choice is... Seal. Oh, I really want to do Seal, but you know what? Gloom's come up so much, we're going to do Gloom. Okay, now Gloom's chosen on the wheel, let's get on with the run. So I'm going to choose um, the names as we go again. I'm going to go with my own name, Brown as it is, and we're going to go with Enfrey David again. I'll link his channel in the description if you like um, all the old school um, bit, bit music and um, audio and stuff like that. I've just listened to one of his videos today. Um, honestly, it sounded like Castlevania style music and it sounded amazing. So well done, David, to that. Um, so yeah, let's get on with the run. Let's have a chat about Gloom before we even get started. So Gloom's stats are very mediocre. It's got a total base stat of 395. 40 speed, which is its worst. And its best, um, its best stat is special, which is in Gen 1, it's 80. That's literally the best stat we've got. So we're going to choose um, Gloom in the place of Bulbasaur, so that means that our end rival is going to be a Charizard. A harder, harder end fight might as well. That's <laughs> what I'm doing for the majority of these videos. And to start off, the move pool is questionable. So Gloom starts off with three moves at level one and doesn't learn anything else until level 15. Well, arguably level 19 because... It starts off with Absorb, Poison Powder, and Stun Spore. Now, Gloom would actually naturally learn this at level 15 um, and 17, the Stun Spore and the powder, Poison Powder, I mean. And then at level 19 is when we get Sleep Powder, so we're actually stuck with Absorb to get through the majority of this early game. Brock will not be a problem whatsoever. But as you've seen, as long, as, if it's not a, a Ground, a Rock, Water Pokemon, Gloom's going to struggle with just having Absorb. Thankfully, with having Poison Powder and Stun Spar, though, we can take off gradually more damage and damage every single attack. But, as you can see here, it even this first rival fight takes quite a while. And you're probably thinking, we could probably go up to Brock and Misty with minimum battles, but going through Viridian Forest, you're going against Weedles and you're going against Caterpies, and all of them resist grass. So it meant that to be able to get through Viridian Forest, we had to be level 11. But as soon as we get to Brock, it's a one-hit KO on both his Pokemon, pretty much. That there just shows. Grass-type Pokemon do really well against Brock, but getting through Viridian Forest, we did lose quite a bit of in-game time. I think we're actually at about 40 minutes in-game time. Whereas some other water Pokemon, we've been able to do it in about 10-15 minutes up to Brock. Moving on to Cerulean, we go to Misty first because we've actually got the type advantage here. And through all of the leveling up we've had to do through um, Mount Moon, we're at level 20 for this battle. And to be honest, we could have been a lot lower, but because of the types of trainers and types of Pokemon they had, I even had to equip Bide to get, be able to get through Mount Moon. Especially against the, um, the Super Nerd with his um, Poison Pokemon. So now Misty's come out with Starmie. Once we've put it asleep, because we're at level, in level 19 we got Sleep Powder. Absorb's just going to gradually tick away at it. I should have really used Poison Powder as well, but I'd rather have that option of using this, of um, so using Sleep Powder. Just so we can get a bit more HP back, we can um, take a few turns without getting hit. And there we go, Misty's a one-shot. But the rival is going to be much, much different. Because um, his lead Pokemon is Pidgeotto. And we only have two damaging moves. Um, we have Absorb. And we have Bide. And Bide is... I need it for a few battles, but I want to get rid of it as soon as possible. 
So the other move we've got is um, Poison Powder, but Sleep Powder in this generation is arguably a lot stronger. Once it's kept asleep, um, it's, in my opinion, much more worth it. But we actually do use Bye for this battle because Pidgeot just decides to spam um, physical attacking moves. And we're down at 7 HP, which isn't great, but the next Pokemon up is Abra. And Abra level 15 has no attacking moves, so it's actually a free, a free battle for this one. And it's a good opportunity for us to use Absorb and get back some HP, which we're going to need for the Rattata, we're going to need for the Charmander. Because the Charmander does no Ember at this point, and it's going to be a bit of a challenge even just to get past the Rattata. But the Charmander comes out, we're going to use Sleep Powder, put it to sleep, it misses, so Ember hits, takes off half our remaining HP. Use the Ember again, uh, I don't, unless we we put it asleep, which means we've actually got a little bit of a chance. Thankfully, we put it asleep again. Absorb's just going to slowly get back our HP. And as the longer Charmander stays asleep, we can win this battle. It's not the most gracious way to win, but with Gen 1 Grass Pokemon, I mean, if you watch the Bulbasaur run, you'll have seen this. They don't really get many good grass moves. I think the the best grass move is Solar Beam, and that's a two-turn move at 120 base power, so you're kind of averaging around about 60 base power attack a turn. When we went over to the SSN here, I actually went into this battle burned because of the Growlithe, um, the Growlithe trainer. That's because I always go and pick up the, um, the Rare Candy and the Max Aether at this point. They're the only two rooms I visit on the SSN. But... Even with that burn, we're still managing to sort of keep alive, but it's just going to come to an end when we come to the Kadabra. We need to be able to take that out quicker. And what you're going to be really confused at it when you see the next um, attempt at, at the rival battle, I'm actually really, really high level. And this, the reason why I'm so high leveled, even at this point in the game, is due to um, Nugget Bridge. So right at the end of Nugget Bridge, um, before you get to Bill's house, there's a trainer with about two or three oddishes and the only attacking move i had was absorb and bide the poison powder does not affect um grass poison pokemon sleep powder yeah would put them to sleep and but it took me to level 30 to be able to even attempt attack like like beating them but the, the main thing about getting to this level is we actually get a new uh, move which is, as you can see there is acid and arguably right now, our most powerful move. <laughs> it's only 40 base power. But you can see here, it's just doing much more damage than Absorb would ever do. And there we go. We've finally beaten the rival, but it took us to level 31, which I'm not happy about whatsoever. <sighs> so next up is Surge. And I wouldn't say it was that difficult here. Like It starts off with um, Voltorb. All his Pokemon are going to outspeed me, even at this level. I mean, it doesn't help that it uses X speeds. So I've just got to try and take out the Pokemon as, as quick as possible. Screech isn't the greatest thing. The Pikachu uses Quick Attack, but it's going to do arguably a lot more damage. And now comes out the Raichu. We should be able to two-shot this as long as we get it to sleep. We get the sleep off. Acid does a critical hit, which is great. But it's going to be a three-shot um, kill. And there we go, we've beaten Surge without actually losing any any HP, which I didn't think we'd be able to do. I thought we'd get hit by at least a quick attack or something. But now we've beaten Surge, it's time to head off to Celadon. I haven't gone against the rival here yet, just because I want to be... I want us to start boosting my stats as quick as possible. So we need to start boosting that speed, so it gives us a little bit more... Um, more of a chance to actually be able to attack first and knock it like one-shotted straight away especially in the late game so if we can increase our speed now it does us better in the long run it's a good it's a good time um, to also get rid of all the useless items that you pick up along the way annoyingly i didn't have enough to be able to get free um calciums did i get calciums yes i got calciums so that means um special attacks going to be higher as well so even if we do get managed to get the drop on some of them we can then hopefully one shot things a lot easier. Of course as well in, in Celadon one of the things you have to do is go and get fresh waters 
that helps you get into Saffron. And then we go against Giovanni. It's going to be an easier battle than going against Erica. But we'll soon see um, how this battle goes. Absorb's going to take out the Onyx and the Rhyhorn very easily. But the biggest threat on this team at this stage of the game is the Kangaskhan. Especially for Gloom. We don't have a move that does any super effective damage. And we're using Acid and he's used Rage. Which is not good. So I, I opt to go for Sleep Powder. Because that means that his Rage is not going to keep increasing his attack. And we can start using Absorb to get back, low back, back a little bit of HP. And because it stays asleep, we can we can KO the Kangaskhan. But if it stayed awake, I reckon we might have had a problem there. Which is arguably quite an easy battle. Which also means um, Giovanni's future battles are probably going to be as easy. So next up is Erica. We're in Celadon. We might as well um, have a try, see how we do. At this point in the game, we don't have Petal Dance. Petal Dance, we get a level 38. So if we level up in this battle, we do get it. And this just shows how annoying grass on grass Pokemon are going to be. Um, because most, po most grass Pokemon in Gen 1 are grass poison. Apart from Tangler, which even, even though we've, we've got Acid, it still didn't do enough to one shot it, I mean. Now, Fireplume comes out, we're just going to... Just going to spam Acid. It's our best move um, right now. Until we can get Petal Dance. But even then, Petal Dance has got its drawbacks. After two or three hits with Petal Dance, it confuses you. Which, for now, it's it's going to... It'll hinder us a bit, but right now, I would rather get rid of Bide. We're going to get Mega Drain from Erica as well, so we can get rid of Absorb and have a, a much better recovery move. I mean, it's only 40 base power, but... We don't have Giga Drain in this generation, which is very annoying. I really wish it was in Gen 1 as well. It would make the Grass Pokemon run so much quicker. So we're going against the Rival and Lavender Tower now. Acid's going to two-shot the Pidgeotto. Acid should one-shot the Execute because it's weak to poison. There we go. It's gone down in one. And these are the battles where I start to realise where the problems are going to be later on. Normally, I don't lose against the rival in Lavender Tower, but in this instance, we actually do, which isn't great. We got confused uh, thanks to Petal Dance, which is one of the drawbacks, but we lost the very first battle against him in Lavender Tower, which is very annoying. So we know we can consistently knock out the Pidgeot. We know we can consistently knock out the Execute. But the Gyarados, this is the first attempt that I got past the Gyarados. Petal Dance hit on this one, which I think I might get rid of Petal Dance later on for Solar Beam, just because you don't have that drawback of um, the confusion after a few turns. I mean, the only other move I really could get rid of it for would be Solar Beam, but I don't really like Solar Beam. I guess the other choice would be Mimic. I'll have to see how it does. And normally I don't also show the Snorlax battles in these runs. But I just wanted to show how annoying <laughs> it is to use a Gloom. I, the, the only other run that I've probably complained about using a Pokemon for is the Siege run. And even, like I've used Bulb, I've done run with Bulbasaur, and even that was quite enjoyable. But I've got to be honest with you guys, playing as Gloom and the Gloom line, it's honestly not very fun. <laughs> it's very, very tedious. Um. The end time that you will see right at the end, though, um, it's arguably a lot better than most of the runs I've done, but that is because um, as I've been doing more and more of these runs, I've learned how to get through the game quicker. I've known how to um, skip some sections that I was previously doing just for just because I thought I had to do it to get through the game. But also, I, I, I'm not playing on four times speed. I changed it to playing at two times speed. And just because I'm not making as many mistakes on on four times speed, um, oh, I also forgot I forgot the um, the bicycle here. <laughs> uh, so we have to go all the way back to Vermilion, then we have to go to Cerulean, and then back to Celadon. That's gonna waste some in-game time. But as I was saying, um, yeah, Gloom is not an enjoyable Pokemon to use. If we had the likes of Razor Leaf as a move that we can learn, then probably would be a bit easier. Um, 
that was that was one of the reasons why I enjoyed the Bulbasaur run. Um, is the move Razor Leaf? It's cr gets high critical crit, high critical hit chance, <laughs> and it was just generally quite like a lot bulky, even as the first stage um, evolution. So, God help me when the Oddish comes up on the run. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. But anyway, now we've got the bike, we can head back off to Celadon. And we can finally go back on the um, bike road and head down to Fuchsia. Haven't been to Saffron yet. I don't want to go and um, face a rival in Sylph. I don't want to face Sabrina because both of them are going to be very tough battles. Koga arguably will be a little bit easier, but we'll soon see. I mean, we don't have a move that's super effective against him, so we're going to have to, going to, have to be strategic here. First comes out Coffin, we're going to put it sleep with Sleep Powder, and we're going to start just using Mega Drain. Either way, both my, all the moves that I have are going to be resisted by this team. So, I haven't got many Mega Drains left, so I'm going to have to keep using Acid more. Acid does have a chance to um, induce a stat drop, I can't remember off the top of my head, but either way, as soon as we get someone to sleep, I'm going to start using Petal Dance here. It's going to do more damage than Acid. At least we're going down to half health. We, we do hit ourselves in Confusion, but Poison Gas is not going to hit us. Sludge is going to do massive damage, which is not good. And we do lose to the Muck on this occasion. So it's not the best strategy to go in with. Now we try again. Coffin, put that asleep. Start using acid, so we are actually at full PP for everything. Mega Drain in this scenario is arguably a lot better than using Petal Dance. Petal Dance does do more damage, but I, yeah, I think I'm going to get rid of Petal Dance soon. <laughs> just because it's just, it's more of a, it's, unless you're on the very last Pokemon, it's more of a hindrance than a help. So we've used a lot of Mega Drains to get to this point, again against the Muk. We're going to have to use Acid just to get through, and we did get a stat drop there. So now we're actually doing more damage, it was defense drop, that's what it was, the defense fell again. So now Acid is doing more and more damage, so it means we're going to maybe save one or two PP here. We just got to make sure we keep it asleep, use Mega Drain once to just get our HP back as much as we can. Because next up's the Coffin and then the Weezing, and... The coffin's not going to be much of a problem. We can just use acid to get rid of it over time, I guess. But we are losing um, our PP for sleep powder, and we want to keep that for the wheezing. So acid is going to gradually just do more and more damage. We did get a defense drop there, so we might be able to save one PP. Right, so now we have to rely on Petal Dance, acid, and sleep powder. Thankfully, toxic um, does not affect us. So we've, um, he's wasted a turn there. We'll see if we can get a couple um, defense drops. We didn't get any on those. So now we're stuck with Sleep Powder and Petal Dance. So we have one. Ah, oh God, it's walked back up. Please don't. Self-destruct. Smog's fine. Oh, come on, please. Oh, actually, wait. Just thinking about it. This is Gen 1 with Gen 1 AI. He won't use self-destruct against me because I'm a grass type and, gra and poison is strong against grass types. And he doesn't recognize that I was a poison type as well. Oh, does that make sense why he didn't use self-destruct? That actually helped a lot. <laughs> okay, moving on to Sylphco. We'll go against the rival. Pidgeot we know we can take down with a couple of acids. But I am going to put it asleep first. Wow, wing attack did so much damage. So we're going to try and get a bit of HP back from... Um, from Pidgeot, it's walking back up, so this is not good, it could just, oh, it's always going to go for wing attack with Gen 1 AI, this is not looking good already, and we're only on the first Pokemon, I'm level 43 here, so we are, we are actually higher level than all of his Pokemon, but we're still going to struggle, we don't even one shot the Execute now, okay, Gyarados comes out, Dragon Rage would probably not be the best thing we really want it to use Liam more okay we'll start using mega drones get some hp back hopefully it stays asleep a couple more turns acid yep take it out the gyarados so that okay that seems all right 
So Alakazam comes out and uh, we don't outspeed. We does use confusion, but we miss and then use side beam. We're done. Ah, uh, that's annoying. I'll tell you what though. This part of the game took me, honest to God, a few, like about an hour in real time. But because I'm not um, keeping all of my levels, um, every time I do, I just reset them um, if I lose a battle. Um, that way I can ensure I can keep the best time. Um, maybe figure out the best strategy to consistently get through. But I'll tell you what, late game gloom is a nightmare. It just really is. Honestly, I don't think out of um, Cedar and Gloom, though. I actually do prefer using Gloom. You've got more options. Like, in terms of the move pool, it's not that bad. It's just Gen 1 grass moves do suck. Um, and we don't really actually... I could go and get double team, but I don't... I'm trying to do these runs now without using double team. So... Thinking about what's probably going to be the best move, best move um, pool for us, and also thinking about the elite four. I did get rid of acid at this point to put takedown on, just to see how we do with takedown. So we can recover HP with Mega Drain, and, it, and takedown would do more damage against Alakazam. Petal Dance probably not the best move to have used there. But it does take it out in two. Now we're onto the Charizard for the first time. On, this is probably about the 20th attempt here. He only does have Ember, but we do get burnt, so that means all of our attacks are now going to do a lot less. And he does outspeed, so we do lose. So what's the only other move that I could probably go and do? I do need more levels if I'm going to be able to do this one. So for the first time in all of these videos, I went to the Fighting Dojo to level up. Which, honestly, I don't do whatsoever. In that last... Um, fight you saw against the rival i was level 48 and i'd use all of my rare candies just to see how i'd do at that level so if i because i didn't save there if i go and level up a couple more it means i'm not wasting all of um the experience points that i get i can look, level up at a lower level and that means that rare candies i can get to a high level when i do use them so when we actually go against the say they were at four in game hours so Few of the Pokemon we've done so far would have already finished the game, and we've still got three more gyms and the Elite Four to do. So, yeah, not the greatest run, but honestly, quicker to this point than I thought it would be. So, Petal Dance takes down Hitmonlee, the level 45 now. Hitmonchan is going to go down to Petal Dance as well, which makes me confident about going against Stern Bruno. I mean, his Onyxes would have been an absolute cakewalk, but. This fighting Pokemon probably would have been a bit of a problem. Um, so we've actually gone to level 50 at this point. We've leveled up a lot. So we put the Pidgeot to sleep. We used double. We picked up Double Edge as well. It's more powerful than Takedown. So we can actually take it out in two. Annoyingly, the recoil damage is a lot worse on Double Edge. But as you can see, we're starting to sweep through the team a bit easier now. So now the Gyarados comes out. We're going to use Sleep Powder. And we're going to use Mega Drain. So we're going to get some of our HP back for Alakazam. It's going to take a few Mega Drains to do this. Um, also to get back up to our full HP. And now the Alakazam comes out. This is the biggest challenge um, in this fight. If we can, can comfortably get past Alakazam. We can heal a little bit. And it puts us on good stead for... Oh, I walk back up. That's not good. And hits with Psybeam. This doesn't look good so far. Oh, we're probably going to be about 75 HP. 73. Okay, so let's see if we outspeed Charizard this time. Do we? No, we don't. It uses Ember. But thankfully, no burn this time. Let's use Double Edge. Hope that does about half damage. Stay asleep. Yes, and there we go. So again, it took me to level 50 to be able to beat Self Core Rival, which. I'm still not happy about it. I'm still not happy I had to be the level I was to beat him at the SSN. But next battle is Giovanni and he will be a cakewalk. Double Edge is going to be a two shot on Nidorino. And most of his Pokemon I'm going to be able to use Mega Drain to pretty much one shot. And then I realised I've run out of um, Mega Drain PP. So we're going to have to Sleep Powder. Annoyingly it's used Rage. <laughs> 
Mon Kangaskhan keeps raged till this point in the game. Petal Dance takes it out in one. Rhyhorn comes out, we're still using Petal Dance. It's going to be another one, one shot KO. And the next one up is Nida Queen. So, nah, it's going to be a two shot KO. And we're confused, so this is going to be kind of annoying. Yep, we're confused, we're going to get hit in confusion. Poison Sting, probably the best move we could have used right now. Oh, wow, it's only going to spam Poison Sting. That works in our favour. It thinks we're thinks we're only a pure grass type. <laughs> cool. So now we've beaten Giovanni first time. There's only one other gym leader left to do um, before we go against him again, and that is Blaine. And we do not match up well against him. We really don't. He's a fire type gym leader. We are not gonna do well here. I didn't even I actually went into this battle just to see how well we would do. And what I didn't realise was that Growlithe was only going to spam agility in this in, in this instance because agility is a psychic move it recognizes that we are a poison type so it only spams that move but well, i mean it was asleep as well so it wasn't really going to do much against us ponyta comes out gonna sleep powder we actually outsped the ponyta that's good so we took in sunlight we're gonna use soul beam it doesn't do that much damage but we'll put it back to sleep it's gonna use super portion and next Soul Beam should take it. Nah, it doesn't. <laughs> Mega Drain's going to take it out. So a little bit more HP to go against Rapidash. If we don't um, outspeed the Rapidash, ah, uh, Fire Spin. <laughs> I feel like this is going to end up on, like, this is going to end up like the run I've done recently with Cloyster. Yep. I'm not going to be able to get it. It's just going to spam fire, spam fire Spin. And we're not going to be able to beat Rapidash. Oh, we, we did? Oh, Mega Drain, how much does that do? 25. Stay asleep, Rapidash. Come on. Come on. Oh, it didn't. It woke up. That's not good. Uh, no. Fire Spin. Come on. Please be lucky. No. There we go. We've lost. <laughs> I hate Fire Spin on this generation. <laughs> I really do hate moves like Rap, Fire Spin and that because you can't do anything else against them. So to change up what I was doing, I actually went and got Mimic. Because the biggest problem with Gloom is its speed. And also I was I was kind of um, thinking for further ahead in the... Um, I, I decided to use all my rare candies here as well. I was thinking for the Elite Four, Agatha resists all grass moves. So what could I actually do against her? And I think mimicking one of her moves is probably going to be the way to go. But we still need to be able to get to Elite Four yet. So I'm at level 57 here. I am not happy with the level I'm at right now. But what we are going to do is mimic agility. Because our speed is trash, we're going to use the badge boost glitch, get our speed up, get our other stats up, and this should ensure that we sweep through this whole battle. So now we're going to use solar beam, and it's a... Oh, it doesn't one-shot still. I've set up the agilities and all. Oh, this does not look good. Okay, Ponytar comes out. We do outspeed so we can sleep powder it. We're going to use Solar Beam. Does it one shot? Yes, it, we got a crit, so it didn't matter that, that we had no idea whether that would just one shot. We do outspeed the Rapid Ash, that's the main thing. So, Solar Beam is going to do about half damage. I was kind of expecting that. It woke up, Solar Beam, it's down, so we're back onto the Arcanine. So, do we outspeed? We do. We're 10 levels above. <laughs> I think this is the highest level I've had to do this battle with so far. This is not good for us whatsoever. Solar Beam is going to take a canny few Solar Beams to be able to do this. Oh, please don't keep healing yourself. Come on. One more. Do we have speed? We do. Mega Drain wins. <sighs> this is a tedious Pokemon. It really is. So, now we've beaten Blaine. There's only one... Fi oh, I actually forgot about Sabrina. This will be difficult. <laughs> Let's see which what, other, what her Pokemon I've got on Mimic. Okay, so we're going to Sleep Powder the Kadabra. Let's use Mimic, see what it's got. And we learned... Dis I misclicked and learned Disable. Great. <laughs> we're probably going to lose now. Mr. Mime comes out. I probably should have used Mimic against Mr. Mime. I was clicking way too 
too fast. I just kind of spam it when I'm in some of these battles. So now Venomoth comes out. We're going to Sleep Powder. And Solar Beam. Oh, it doesn't do much at all. Nothing at all. At least we've um, got rid of Psy Beam there. I kind of anticipated a misclick there that it was going to wake up. We're just going to have to keep using Mega Drain. Keep putting it back to sleep. Because we don't really want to lose any HP to go against the, um, the Alakazam next. And I really hope we outspeed it at level 57. Come on, do we outspeed? Do we outspeed? We don't. Ah, thankfully, it only used Psy Beam. So we do get a sleep off. We're going to use Solar Beam, see how much damage that does. Ooh, it nearly takes it out. Mega Drain. And we actually one shot. We actually beat Sabrina on the first time. That I was not expecting, but we are 14 levels above what her best Pokemon is. So I guess it's not too surprising. Last up is Giovanni before we head off to Elite Four. We're level 59 now. So this is going to be a cakewalk. We're a grass type Pokemon. He uses mostly ground type um, Pokemon. This is going to be an easy battle. The Duck Trio was kind of worried that it would still outspeed us even with being 17 levels above it. And I decided, you know, I'm going to learn Dig. Because he's got a couple of um, Poison Ground Pokemon and my grass moves will not do much against it. So we use Dig. And we one shot the Nida Queen. My strategy worked. Nida King comes out. Do we want. Yes, we outspeed. And do we one shot? We do. And there we go. We're just onto the ride on. Cool. We've um, beaten Giovanni without losing any HP there. But here's where the challenge gets phenomenally more and more difficult. Next up, we have the rival before the Elite Four. And... Uh, I, that Pidgeot, starting off with a Pidgeot and you starting with a Grass Pokemon is such a bad matchup. He wakes up from Sleep Powder so many times, but this is where using Mimic actually really helped us out. So we can Mimic Agility, get our speed up, and... It was only at this point that I actually realised he's not actually doing any damage to me. Why is that? Again, it's because agility is a psychic move and I'm part poison. So he thought, you know what, I'm only going to use agility against you. So we can get through Pidgeot without losing any HP, which is fantastic. It sets, up, sets us up for Rhyhorn. Mega Drain's going to take it out in one. Next up is going to be, I think, Execute. And... I misclicked and used agility there. Solar Beam is probably our best move we can use against it. We don't have any other attacking moves. But Mega Drain, going to take it out in two hits. Gyarados comes out next as long as we can put it asleep. We should be able to beat it with a Solar Beam. It doesn't take it out in one, which is surprising even after badge boosting. Alexan comes out next. We should be outspeeding it now, so we'll put it asleep. Didn't affect it, but use this reflect. Um, I think I would, would rather it use reflect than um, actually hit us. And so far, we haven't actually lost any HP, which is surprising. The final rival battle might be a lot easier than I thought. As long as we can outspeed, we can get agility, we could win. But thinking about it, I don't think Pidgeot on the very final rival battle has agility. So how we're going to get around that is going to be difficult. Ah, Flamethrower. I forget that Charizard's got Flamethrower at this point in the game. And our best move is going to be Solar Beam. We're going to need... I don't know how we're going to get past the rival at the end here. So Sleep Powder comes out. Fire, ah, Flamethrower puts me on 10 HP. He uses a potion. Come on. Solar Beam. Oh, come on. This is not looking good. We did win first time there, but we're level 60 at this point. There's not many more levels we can get up via rare candies because I've used them all. We might struggle when it comes to the rival right at the end. Lorelei, on the other hand, I'm not actually very worried. I'm not worried about whatsoever. Most of the Pokemon are water type. So I'm going to put Dugong to sleep. Let's see what we can mimic. Um, actually, no. 
The Slowbro is going to be the better Pokemon to mimic because it has Amnesia. And that raises our special, which is going to make our um, grass moves a lot stronger. So, let's put Cloyster to sleep. And we just got to make sure we outspeed and we don't get hit by any um, ice type moves because that's super effective. Slowbro comes out, we put it to sleep, and then. Oh, there we go, that's what we want. We want to use Amnesia. Why is, why is sleep powder not working? There we go, it took three sleep powders to be able to put it to sleep. So let's get Amnesia, and let's just spam it. It's a Psychic type move, so that's all he's, all they're going to use against us. And there we go, we've uh, set up our Amnesia and the Badge Boost glitch. So let's use Solar Beam, that should be a one shot, easy. Next up is Jinx, probably the scariest Pokemon on this team, because I have no super effective moves against her. But once she's asleep, Solar Beam is a one shot. Next up is Lapras, Sleep Powder. And, oh, woke up straight away. Okay, let's use Mega Drain. How much does that do? It does half damage, but it was critical as well. There we go. Lorelei, down easy. First time. Usually when you've got a Grass Pokemon, she is quite easy, but we'll see how we'll see how Bruno is. I actually think Bruno would be more of a threat than um, Lorelei will be, just because we we've only two of the Pokemon we can be super effective against. So let's see how we do. Gloom is going to do Mega Drain, takes out the Onyx in one. Next up should be Hitmonchan, so we're going to have to put that asleep. I wonder if we can mimic anything here, but nah, you know, let's just, just, just use Solar Beam. And we get to level 62, so it's a good thing we didn't use any badge boost glitch in there, because we would have lost everything. Jump Kick, I didn't realise that Hitmonlee would outspeed me at this level. That's not good. So, Solar Beam should one shot, it does. And next is Onyx, we can get our HP back with Mega Drain. I didn't even heal in between the battles between Lorelei and Bruno. Machamp, this could be... Yep, we've got it sleep. This should be easy now. And Solar Beam. It's not a one-shot, but it uses Focus Energy, so pretty much, yeah. We've, we've, we've won that without losing any HP. Now for the Elite Four member that I was more scared about, and this is Agatha. So there was a few things... That would be hard with this battle. The first thing is that we don't have a move which is super effective against her. But she does. She has Dream Eater and we have Sleep Powder. So if we can put her Pokemon to sleep, we can use the Psychic type Dream Eater to get back our HP and to take out her Pokemon. I'll be honest, this is probably my fifth attempt against Agatha before I figured this out. <laughs> But when I, once I figured this out, the battle became an absolute cakewalk. It was so easy after that. Annoyingly, she used Super Potion there. I'm going to use Dream Eater again, and that takes out the Golbat. We don't get many power points for Dream Eater, so we have to be conservative with it. But as soon as we put her Pokemon to sleep, each, each one becomes so easy. But I will stress, it took me about five attempts to figure this out. <laughs> I decided to go for Solar Beam here to see how much it would do. We actually get a critical, so I, I have no idea how much it would have done. Level 63 now. Our box not going to be a problem whatsoever. Dream Eater, it's going to go down in one. Gengar comes out as soon as we get this. Oh, we got confused. Oh, that could be bad. Ah, oh, we're not confused. There we go. We just put it to sleep, and there we go. We've two Dream Eaters, and we've won. So yeah, if you're going to go for a Gloom run, I'd definitely recommend picking up Mimic. Because that'll be the easiest way to get through Agatha. Okay, so Gyarados, it, we put it to sleep. And because this battle actually takes quite a while, I've sped it up quite considerably. We do Mimic um, Agility, so that means we are going to get the Badge Boost glitch from that. But there's a big problem when it comes to the Dragonite right at the end. Um, so as you can see here... Meg, we've, we're kind of losing our PP really, really quickly against these Pokemon. But it also means when it comes to Dragonite, we don't have a super effective move, and that's how much Solar Beam there is doing. Mega Drain is doing maybe about 5 damage. It's not doing much at all. And uh, the most annoying thing as well, he has Hyper Potions. So we're on very, very low PP here. I actually have to resort to the tactic I hate um, resorting to. 
we had to resort to struggle to get past Dragonite. <laughs> and because this took so long, I hope you can understand why I've sped that up to like 300%. It was ridiculous how long that took in real time. But finally, we're on the rival. So, we can't use any moves against... We can't mimic any of Pidgeot's moves, so we just need to take it down. The biggest problem at the end is going to be Charizard. Alakazam is also a really big problem because it comes out second. We've got no badge boost, so we have to just get it to sleep and hope it uses Reflect. <laughs> and finally, it goes down with two Solar Beams. I think, you know, could I use Mimicking as Rhydon, but it's not the best move to be able to do for this. I want a move that is going to be doing tons of damage against the Charizard. So, what move could I use? Think about the Pokemon that he has got left. He's got Execute, which he's only got Hypnosis, Bar Barrage, and Stomp. I did try using Stomp. Did not work as a strategy. The next Pokemon up is going to be Gyarados. If you are very familiar with this game, you're going to know what moves Gyarados has at this point. It has Dragon Rage, and it has Hydro Pump. So we have 2 PP to be able to take out the Charizard when it comes out. We just gotta make sure we make sure we take out the Gyarados. We do. We need to put it to sleep. Oh, we got Fire Blasted. That's not good. We misses with Fire Blast, and then it, go, it wakes up. But we one shot, and that is why we chose Mimic for this run. Whew. So this has been a very long video. So thank you if you got to this point in the video. Let's see how we did with this run. We finished the run at level sixty-five and five hours fifty-three in-game minutes. Which is honestly better than I thought it would be. <laughs> but anyway, thank you for watching guys. Please like and subscribe, you know, all the normal YouTube stuff. Check out M3David's channel and we'll see you next time on the next video. Take care.